All right, our first stop today will be at the dump site where this monster dumped the little body of Nevaeh Buchanan. All right, everyone, so here we are at the site, and you can see the memorial that's up. This teddy bear has been here for a very, very long time, and it does not look like we'll be able to get down to the water anymore. The water's up quite high, but... This is uh, this is the memorial they set up for Nevaeh. Been up here since 2009, and I don't know who I don't know who uh, comes by and takes care of it. Oh, you can see they still have a pathway down. I'm not going to crawl down, but uh, you get the gist. What's down here, and at the bottom, you can see a little rounded area, and that's where. They found her body. Now what's really sad about this is that whoever decided to kill her and dump her here knew this area. This is out. You just don't you just don't drive you just don't drive out here and, and come across it uh, by sheer accident. This is this is a place you searched for or you knew about and you came to. We've all felt that Everybody out here, we've all felt that uh, since the murders happened. And uh, so one of the horrifying things about the uh, scene where he dumped her body is that she was actually encased in cement. And he actually mixed the cement wrong. And when he mixed the cement, he mixed it too weak, too watery. And little Nevaeh actually fought in the cement to get out and you could see that uh, between her fighting and the cement being mixed wrong her body actually floated to the top of the encasement of cement that uh, he had put her in I say he we don't know if it's a he but we just assume it's a he and uh, whoever it was and uh, she was actually struggling trying to get out two fishermen came by and I read a couple of different uh, re, uh, uh, reports on it. One says that uh, they could smell something. Um, the other one said that, that they saw. So I don't know if they could smell her decomposing body or whether they could uh, see it. But anyways, they were fishing here. They uh, pulled their boat up here where they unfortunately found Nevaeh's body encased in cement. They were able to tell it was a body because she had float, uh, she had float, floated, there we go, she had floated up to the top of the cement. Very, very. So what I did want to show you is I wanted to show you the area that uh, little, little Nevaeh uh, grew up in. This isn't the big city, guys. This is Monroe. Right now we're in downtown Monroe. This is Monroe. And um, you'll get the idea as we're driving here and we get closer to our home. They're big, fancy, old homes. And on the right here, you'll see uh, the George Custer uh, statue that has been here since like 1911, over 100 years. And uh, we see somebody's getting a, a visit by the police officers. All right, so as I was saying, this is just north of downtown Monroe. And you can see that, I mean, the homes are older homes. Um, the, one of the houses here on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side was used uh, for the Underground Railroad during the, the Civil War, bringing uh, hiding slaves. Um, as they uh, came north so that they could make their way into Canada the um, uh, Lake Erie is only just a couple miles straight ahead from us here uh, not very far at all so when we turn to the right here um, there are some older homes here as well and uh, it does get a little bit um, commercial now with um, medical buildings. The time uh, of Nevaeh's death, uh, it was pre looked pretty much like it did 
about the only thing I can really say about this area that probably has changed is the hospital itself that we're going to go by. The hospital itself um, used to be just a local hospital and now it is a, uh, a very large hospital. So once we get to the hospital, we're almost on her backyard. And uh, I've seen about six cops in about two blocks. So there must be something else going on other than just that uh, young man being stopped by three police vehicles, a state boy and uh, two locals. Because right in front of us now is uh, another local cop. Yeah, it's a young lady. Nope, it's a, it's a guy cop. He just looks like a young lady. All right, so uh, we'll go by the hospital here in just a second and um, start to see the hospital on the right-hand side. And it's pretty big. And then her apartment is a couple blocks from there. And like I said, as you look, it's not the slums. It's not inner city. And here's the hospital here. And like I said, it's about three times the size of what it used to be. Um, ProMedica now owns it, so it's gotten huge. Monroe is about the size of uh, 100,000 people. And um, it still is a fairly good place to live, in my opinion. I don't live in Monroe. I live in Raisinville Township. Even though I have a Monroe address, but... It's where we choose to live. We want it outside of the uh, city. On the right-hand side here is a huge mansion. I don't know who owns it, but it is huge. And uh, here in just another block or so, we'll be coming up to... We'll be coming out to the apartment. So right here on the right-hand side, this, these are the Charlotte Arms apartment. And now it's called Sterling Point. I don't know if they changed it, changed hands, um, if they decided to get rid of the Charlotte Arms name. But what I found funny is I was uh, coming here a couple weeks ago looking for things, is I pulled in here and it said Charlotte Arms Apartment, and I see that that sign is gone now. So it must have been just a recent recent change. So this apartment building that you see on the in front of us here, this was where little Nevaeh lived with her mother and her grand uh, her grandmother. Now, it had to be somewhere by this tree because this tree um, was very prominent. I don't know what apartment she actually lived in, uh, but this tree was very prominent in all the newscasts. So whenever the newscasters decided that they were going to do a newscast, a newscast, this is where they were at. So I'm not sure where the little boy lived, but she was supposed to be down here uh, playing according to the little boy. I don't know where the scooter was found. They never said really where the scooter was found. Um, basically all they said is that somebody came in and somebody um, seen a car speed off. All right, guys, we're back here for day two of the apartment uh, building where little Nevaeh lived. Um, I'm going to try to make this real quick. I just wanted to touch uh, base on uh, the media circus. Uh, I had to come back for a second day here because my camera quit, and uh, so I did want to get this out. The media circus that was here that day and the days to follow was absolutely horrific. One of the worst uh, offenders of it, in my opinion, was Nancy Grace. I watched the interview that she did from her comfortable studio in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, that she had with the mother and the grandmother, and it was absolutely disgraceful. She absolutely tore those two people apart. She probably done more damage um, to the reputation of that mother and grandmother. Um, it was just absolutely horrendous. Um, 
one of the things that I did read online here just recently, <clears throat> because, you know, it's been 11 years now, and there has been no movement in the case since since 2014. Um, there were three gentlemen that uh, had been picked up, two of them that she was associated with. One of them she may have even been dating, I'm not sure. Um, a third one was picked up, but all three of them um, have uh, proven to be, or at least there has been no evidence that shows that they are involved in her disappearance and murder at all. But one of the things I did read, and I believe it was on Reddit, that... Um, Someone was complaining about the father not being in the life of this child and how could a father not be in the life of this child. Um, and she thought that was that was bad. You know, that was horrible. As a father who is who was who went through a divorce. No, I went through a divorce back in the 70s. In divorce court, men are treated like garbage even today. Uh, my son went through a divorce here not long ago. Men are treated like garbage. And I don't know this guy. I don't know if he's a good guy. I don't know if he's a bad guy. I have no idea if she um, tried to keep him in the life of this child or if he just chose to stay out of the life of this child. I have no idea. But it was a blanket, blanket statement made by somebody. And I just want to say that I took great offense to it because as a father who whose ex-wife used every legal means available to keep me from my children. And the judges just went along with it. It didn't matter. Matter of fact, the judge that I originally went to, uh, I actually filed for custody as well. And the judge looked, square, looked me square in the face and said, no father in my court will ever get custody of a child when the mother is capable. So <clears throat> it, um, I thought the statement that was made was kind of ridiculous. Uh, someone who doesn't know, I see those statements all the time. And um, if you don't know the situation as to why the father wasn't in that child's life, if that was indeed the case, it sounded like that was the case. But if that was the case, we don't know why. We have absolutely no idea why. And um, w the speculation, I just, like I said, I, that really struck me and really bothered me. So anyways, I am going to go over to the cemetery now. It's only about a five minute drive. And if we're lucky, my camera has actually worked. And we'll go over there and I will show you uh, little Nevada's, Nevada's, uh, uh, headstone. Alrighty, here we are. Getting ready to go into St. Joseph Cemetery, Monroe, Michigan. St. Joseph Cemetery, Monroe, Michigan. Won't you come and walk with me as I visit the grave of little Nevaeh Buchanan? Cemetery. Grave site over here is somebody I do know. So this would be Louis and Rosa Randazzo. Now I never met Rosa. She passed away when I was just a uh, a teenager and I didn't know her son Sonny and uh, but, but Louie the dad well I knew the dad quite well he lived to be almost a hundred years old and uh, although we couldn't hear for a darn at the end uh, he uh, certainly was a joy to talk to every time I went in to see him it didn't really make much of a difference he was always 
always greeted me with a smile. This cemetery, St. Joseph, is just outside Monroe, Michigan, and well, outside downtown Monroe, Michigan. It's actually in Monroe, Michigan. And um, Otis, I was in the old part, which is way down there. And the oldest grave that I could find was back in about 1872. Okay, so here's uh, another Randazzle. Now this is Grandma and Grandpa. They came from Sicily. And this is the mother and father of Louis over there. Now they passed away, uh, Grandma passed away in 1980. Grandpa passed away in 1963, and of course I was just a little, a little tyke when Grandpa passed away there. Never met him, never met either one of them. All right, well I am in the section, or the area at least, where Nevea is uh, buried. And uh, got ourselves a U.S. Army Sergeant here, Micro Ingram, who was killed in uh, Afghanistan. I was here for his homecoming when we brought him home. And uh, here's his big headstone. Very, very well liked and one hell of a hero. Still makes an impact uh, on this community. And I believe these are his grandparents. I'm not 100% certain. But uh, I believe uh, grandparents. I've met his dad once, so I know it's not his dad. And another, another uh, Ingram here. Samantha Lynn. And uh, I'm not quite sure what the story is with her. I'll look it up and if I find anything on it. So as I said before, I showed you the headstone of uh, a friend of mine's parents and grandparents. And um, here is my in-laws, Joe and Marsha. Marsha passed away in 2000 of heart ailments. And uh, Joe passed away 2011. Uh, after just many, many, many medical problems. Joe was a World War II Navy vet. Spent his time, uh, for the most part, uh, off of Africa. And uh, at one time, stole a Jeep from the U.S. Navy and went AWOL. Story he didn't want to tell, and we couldn't find out all about it until I pulled his records up after he passed away. I'm walk on over here to Nevaeh's grave very nice uh, loving headstone that they put up and um, a lot of people come by and leave items for her and uh, I've been here a couple of times she's got a little motorcycle on top said Monroe's a little angel the community really came out when she passed away and she was found and everybody tried to do what they could to help find her and uh, it is 11 years later and it is still such a sad sad story now this is another area of the cemetery where there are little babies here and looks like on this one we have mama holding her her little baby so sad I'm blessed that uh, my children all of them were healthy and uh, we had little to no issues with them Gabriel Michael Dotson he lived August 13th 2012 and next to uh, Gabriel is Brooklyn. Oh boy, I'm gonna mute Sanko. I'm gonna mute, mutilate that. 
our little angel and she lived July 19th 2013 always always sad when you see babies and we have another one here Oliver Lee Richard Stewart March of 2020 so right at the uh, beginning of COVID COVID quarantine time and then uh, these are all look like they're all babies who had lived just one day and then we go down here to Zachary Browser and uh, he lived uh, looks like maybe just a just a little bit over a year so always breaks my heart to be in the cemetery where we see the the little babies so that's going to do it for today um, I hope this video turns out well I enjoyed doing the video sometimes they are a, a pain in the took us to do but I do enjoy doing the videos and that'll be it for today so I hope to see you again if you like what I've been putting up please uh, subscribe and Give me a thumbs up. He'll help. Uh, he'll help me get my videos out to the masses. And I'll see you again the next time I walk through a cemetery.